In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. Happy Easter. Lord Jesus is risen. Today is Easter to remember the salvation of Lord Jesus for mankind. Lord Jesus cleansed our sins with his blood, giving his life for all of us. But after three days, Lord Jesus resurrected. Good morning, dear friends of Our Power. Today is a very special Sunday because today is Easter. I wish you all a happy Easter. Lord Jesus came to earth because he loves us. He was crucified sacrificed his life. He shed his blood for our salvation. Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus, three days after his crucifixion, representing the resurrected life of Lord Jesus. That all those who believe in Lord Jesus through baptism to die, to be buried, and raised together with Lord Jesus, that we can have a new life. A new life like Lord Jesus. Wish that all brothers and sisters in Christ to be touched by the love of Jesus to have a resurrected life like Lord Jesus. Manifest a new life. May we all live like Lord Jesus. For those who have not yet believed in Christ, may God's love be upon you, so that you can experience His love. You can also have an eternal, full and abundant life. Once again, I wish you all a happy Easter. Our program is bilingual broadcast. Other than original English, if the TV is the equipment that can facility, you can watch our power in Cantonese. In the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Today, the Easter message of Pastor Bobby Schiller is, Our best days are ahead. He declares to us a very important statement. The power that raised Lord Jesus from the dead is in us, and this power cannot be destroyed so that we can receive the free gift of eternal life. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because of the resurrection of Lord Jesus, everything changed. He conquered death. Neither evil or darkness cannot put us into the ground and heaven is breaking into our world. His resurrected power not only moves away our fear of death, this power also activates our purpose and calling in life, prepares for us a fantastic future and a new tomorrow. Because Lord Jesus is risen, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Welcome, welcome. What 
a joy to have you here this morning. Easter to me means victorious. Yeah. Jesus is victorious over death. I look at the struggles in my past and I see that God reigned victorious. Yeah. I look at my current struggles and things to come. I see that God is and forevermore will be victorious. He has the final say. Would you turn around and shake the hand of the person next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. Let's pray. Father, thank you in Jesus' name that you raised Christ from the dead and the same power that lives in Jesus Christ, the power to move mountains, the power to raise the dead, the power to heal the sick, that that power is within us. And we're so thankful that you are here, Lord, and that your power is here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
1 Corinthians 15. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of all the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Listen as we continue the Easter story found in John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. This is the word of the Lord. John 20, 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing that you can be born again. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing Christ has risen from the dead. Angels up on the tombstone said he has risen. 
Would you hold your hands out like this as a sign of receiving, and we're going to say this creed together. And this is scriptural, by the way. This is, you can count on it. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. 
I am not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, today is a special day. I'm so glad that you're here to celebrate with us this morning the most important event in human history. The fact that the Son of God in flesh was raised from the dead for you and for me. This morning, I want to remind you, you can clap to that. This is a celebration. When you say stuff like he's risen, and you, when you put one hand in the air and say, glory, everybody say glory. glory. Yeah, it's good news that Jesus was raised from the dead, and that's something we can celebrate. The, the thing I want you to hear more today than anything is this, that because Christ was raised from the dead, that same power is in you. The power that cannot be destroyed. That, like a seed, that's what Jesus compares it to. He says, unless you take a seed and, and kill it and put it in the ground, it remains only a seed. But if you put it in the ground and it dies, it becomes, well, much more, doesn't it? Sometimes the deaths that we feel in our life are actually the very things that activate our purpose and our calling. And so I want you to know that whoever you are, that the power of Jesus is in you, eternity is in you, heaven is in you, and you cannot be destroyed. When evil attacks you or darkness comes and puts you into the ground, just prepare yourself because it may be that your greatest potential is about to be activated. Isn't that good news? It's good news that in you and me, the very life and spirit of Jesus Christ abides and it means that you cannot die. That is good news. That means your best days are ahead of you. Are you sick? Someday you'll be healthy. Are you dying? Someday you're going to be more alive than you've ever felt. Have you lost someone you love? Maybe you're mourning them today. Maybe you're grieving the loss. You're going to see them again. The promise of the resurrection is that we serve a good God who's not going to just let you die. We serve a good God who, who gave his life for you and for me, for his kids, who said, there's no reason I'm going to let them die. He's come for you. Receive today the free gift of eternal life. And it is free. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you now. Yeah. Heavens, yeah, hallelujah! Heaven is in your body. And friends, that is such good news. Eternity dwells within you. You know, there is a psychological power of death that weighs on many people, but it doesn't weigh on you. It doesn't have to because you're alive. Scientists have written extensively, especially psychology, about the power of this dread or fear of death on our behavior and on our mental health. It's dread. It's anxiety. There is this thing buried deep within our soul, this sort of looming fear. Well, you know, the clock is ticking. The sands are running out. Every day I look in the mirror, there's another age spot. There's another wrinkle, a little sign that, well, life is short. And we use phrases like that, don't we? You see, psychologists have already agreed that one of the main, or if not the main source of mental illness in the world is constant fear or dread, anxiety, and particularly the fear of death. So death itself doesn't just ruin us, but the fear of death also is ruining us. I'm bragging not on me, I'm bragging on Jesus Christ, the fact that he not only removed death, he can remove the fear of death, the dread that many of us feel, that worrisome feeling that many of us have. And many of us do have that. As time goes on and people live older, ironically enough, people hate aging more. When you look more and more on television and the things, uh, uh, all the media comes out in the world, you're only seeing younger people, right? Like younger people have more value than older people, as if, right? We have an older church and we love our older people because they're smarter, they've had more experience, they're wiser, right? Yeah! That's right. I love them. And uh, that's what the kingdom of God believes, right? Because the older you are, the wiser you are, the more experience you have. See, we're spiritual people. We're not fleshly people. 
We believe that the body may age like milk, but the spirit ages like wine. Yeah, I like that. You can tweet that. So for us, you know, the, for us, even the source of not our mental illness, but the source of a lot of our sin is rooted in our fear of death, our hurry, our desire to leave a legacy, the way in which you might steal or bend the rules because you're afraid you won't have enough for whatever reason. There is this undergirding fear of death and fear of sickness and fear of aging and all of this a fear of losing my youth. As Martin, Mark Twain said, youth is wasted on the young. You know, you feel that as you start to get older. You, and so, so aging and death, it has this sort of corrosive nature on the soul and on the mind. But I want to remind you that that doesn't matter for you. You're going to age and you're going to die in some ways. It's just a doorway into the next part of your life. You are a ceaseless being with an eternal destiny in God's great universe. That's not, that can't be taken from you. You know Jesus and his life dwells in you and his power is in you. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is within you. And just as a mental exercise, let's pretend for a moment that we were in a comic book or a movie or something like that and you couldn't die. What if you couldn't die? What if something happened? I don't know, an alien comes down or a toxic spider bites you or something like that. You know, something happens and now in this story, you can't die. Not only can you not die, but you could, you know, give that gift to, to the people that you love and care about. How would your life change? Uh, would you quit your job? Uh, maybe you'd go back to school like you always said you would. Uh, would you stop saving money? Would you maybe not save as much and give more? What would you do in your life? How would your life change? And my guess is not that at the very least you're going to sleep better and that you're going to hurry less. And the reason I say that is that, that fear that the fear of death, the fear of aging, the fear of wanting to have a legacy, the, the fear of not having personal value, which is all rooted in the fear of death, that this story is going to come to an end, that that looming fear is destroying your life. And Jesus says to you right now, don't be afraid. You can't be killed in a way. That the same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise you from the dead. You will rise as Christ was raised to life. Amen. This was the journey that the apostles experienced. They realized that what Jesus said was true, that we are ceaseless eternal beings when we, are in, when we have the indwelling of eternity, of heaven, of the Holy Spirit. The apostles, when they were called to follow Jesus, it was in a day in which rabbis were the like, most important person uh, in a society. And my dad wrote about this in one of his books where he talks about how the domine was like the, the judge, the, the ruler, the overall person of these Dutch immigrant communities. That's how the rabbi was in the Jewish societies, that, there was a, that the rabbi was the most honored, revered person. He was the judge, jury, and executioner. And so for every boy to become a rabbi would have been like becoming a superstar. And the only way to become a rabbi is if another rabbi asks you to follow him. And rabbis back then only asked, you know, the smartest, the brightest, the best looking, the Harvard. And here Jesus' disciples, some of them who are women and tax collectors, were invited to follow him. And it was this not only a tremendous honor, but it meant that he wanted everyday people to be like him. And so to follow the rabbi was like enrolling in seminary. And here they are in preparation to become rabbis themselves. And they think, you know, I'm going to learn Torah and I'm going to become a rabbi and then have my graduation. Isn't going to be so awesome? And then things start getting a little weird in a good way. Jesus starts talking about this thing called the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. And he starts saying that everything we've been talking about as a Jewish people through scripture is invading its way into the world now. And that what was undone in the Garden of Eden is actually coming back. That eternal life in heaven is breaking into this world. And he says things like, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you if you die, but don't forget, this is our future home and we're going to save it. And he starts saying things like, this kingdom of God is breaking in. And guess what? I am called to lead the charge and I am called to be the king. And I am obeying my father in his call to save this world and to save you. And I want you to know that you're going to live forever if you trust in me. And he starts saying things like this, which feel a little weird. But then he does stuff like raises a girl from the dead. And then he turns a bunch of bread and wine that's just a little bit, like or bre or bread and water and, and uh, fishes, and feeds thousands of people with it. And then he starts doing all of these amazing things, healing people, healing the sick, 
miracles. And then they're starting to feel like, well, maybe all the stuff that he's saying is real. And he's saying, yeah, all the stuff that is happening is because the spirit of life is invading a, a world that has been darkened. And I'm going to bring an end to sickness. And I'm going to bring an end to death. And so he's talking about this and what's happening. And it's starting to drum up something. And now these disciples and this huge mob of thousands of people who are basically wanting miracles, wanting to see what Jesus is doing. He's now moved from rabbi status, like pastor status, to being a prophet. Oh, this is a biggie. This is a big one. This is going to be like Moses or Elijah. And now people are, are talking about it a lot. And then even crazier things start happening. He raises Lazarus from the dead and he walks on water. And then he starts to give his disciples the power to heal people and to cast out demons. And they start doing some of the things that Jesus does. It's like it's rubbing off on them. And then this terrible event happens where he's crucified. They think when they're going into Jerusalem, they're going to set up a throne and a new kingdom, that it's going to happen now. But in this upside down kingdom, Jesus is killed by the Roman Empire. He's bullied and beaten and thrown away. And even though he said that he, he would die and be raised on the third day, they just kind of forget that and they scatter and they flee. And when Jesus is raised from the dead, and when it's women who recognize it first, four women who first proclaim the gospel of the risen Savior, which back then was a no-no. I mean, it's a, a really great testimony to the validity of, this, of the gospel. Everything changes because everything he said is true and it is true. That since the moment of resurrection, Jesus became in his very body the first fruits of the kingdom of God on earth. He became in his very person, heaven breaking into earth. Heaven and earth used to be one and it was torn apart by our sin. But Jesus, in reconciling us from our sin, is bringing heaven back into the world. And it's amazing. It's good, good news. What he said about you is true. You don't have to be afraid. You're not afraid. You're brave. You have faith. You are stable and strong because Christ lives in you. You feel in your bones and in your body eternity and heaven and the Holy Spirit. You know, based when you look inward, that God is alive, alive in you, and calling you to a purpose. You are God's treasure, chosen, picked. Uh, and he is even now preparing you for your fantastic future, for your new tomorrow. I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see the ways in which heaven blossoms in your life as you face the challenges and overcome them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, miracles are happening every day. I've seen them with my own eyes, and miracles are a sign that God is at work in this world and that since the resurrection of Jesus, heaven is still breaking in to our world all the time. The first time I saw with my own eyes as an almost adult was in, in Thailand. I went with this missionary group. I was six, I turned 16 in Thailand. And I remember the first thing was on our first day, the leader of our group, project director, she was a college student. She was dressed up like a sailor because we were doing dramas for kids. She had these white pants on. And we all watched. She was in front as a car hit her at high speed. And she went flying through the air like a rag doll. She was hitting the side and the hip. And we watched as she tumbled on the ground, and we all thought she was dead. And when she got up, she was wearing white cotton pants, okay? When she got up, she was crying. She was upset, obviously. But she was fine. Her pants weren't even dirty. She didn't have a bruise. She didn't have a scratch, broken anything. God just protected her. Why? Well, she, you know, she had a job to do. Didn't, doesn't get to go to heaven yet. <laughs> Not yet. And, uh, and that really kicked off a trip where we saw a lot of this kind of stuff that completely changed my worldview. I came back a totally different person because being in Thailand, I just saw with my own eyes these incredible miracles that right they're just happening in front of all of us. And we all wrote them down and we talked about it and we've never forgot it. But, you know, I risk when I talk about the scientific mind saying, oh, you're, he's either crazy or he's lying or he didn't see what he thought he saw. And, th and that's what every person of faith has to deal with, including the apostles when they have the joy of seeing a miracle in, in heaven breaking into our world. I remember on that trip, we were praying once, and there was a lady who had a tumor on her neck. And we laid hands, and we prayed for it, and the guy took his hand off, the tumor was gone. Another time when we were praying in this village that they were relied on rice for the economy, and so they needed rain, and the monsoon seasons hadn't come, and it had been three months of, of dry nothing. The sun was out 100%, and we gathered, and we all started praying for rain, 
and we prayed for about an hour. And by the time we were done, it started sprinkling as we started loading up our van. And the people, and some of these people who were Buddhist or pagan, started worshiping our team, saying, these are gods or these are angels who brought rain to us. We're like, no, 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 no. There's only one who makes the rain. I remember when we got back from a, a, another trip like that, there was a girl who had gone to Africa, and she had fallen off a, a car, and she broke her neck. And it was, she said that, um, that the, the doctor, it was in Nairobi, which is a legit city. I mean, I know it's Africa, but they have real doctors that are trained in real medicine. They did real x-rays, and they said, you're never going to walk again. She wasn't able to move anything from the neck down, and they showed her these x-rays. And so the missionary group I was with sent an ambulance plane to go pick her up and take her back to a hospital. And before that happened, the local pastors and the guy that was leading the trip, can you imagine, by the way, sending your 17-year-old teenage daughter to Africa and you find out she comes home a quadriplegic? Like, Thanks a lot, God, right? I mean, you'd feel angry, you'd feel frustrated. These guys, they gather around her and they start praying for her. And she said, I felt like fire went through my whole body and she got out of bed and she was fine. And uh, she came back and told us the story and showed us the x-rays. Friends, we live in a miraculous world. And I know that all the time, kids with cancer don't get healed, and our prayers often don't get answered, and I don't always know why. I know heaven answers a lot of that, but still, it's, I know it's tragic. I know we don't always get, but these things are signs that God is at work in this world, and that, like, heaven is pressing in against the firmament of this world, and it's breaking in through you and through me. And I want you to know, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you. For some of you, it's just a little pilot light. For some of you, it's a big fire. And I want to encourage that you stir that gift up and you allow the heavens to begin to, to swirl around in your body because you have within you the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. You trust in Jesus. Your home is heaven. Eternity and all the power of the universe is dwelling in your body. God has given it to you to break chains, to, to, to speak things that don't exist as though they were. It's in you. Have faith. If you had faith of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain and it's true. That the faith and the power of Jesus Christ that raised him from the dead is in your body. It's in your fingertips right now. Believe, have faith, and trust that heaven is breaking in and it's breaking in through you. Every day, heaven gets a little closer. Every day, Jesus is a little closer to this world. And we say, even now, come Lord Jesus. We can't wait to stand before the throne of a risen Lord in which heaven and earth become one again. And of course, heaven is your heartbeat. Heaven is in your body. And when that happens, it changes the way that you spend money and it changes the way that, that you view suffering and it, all the relationships in your life, they're eternal. It affects how, how you view your aging. Aging is good. That should be like a new Easter rant. Aging is good. Aging is good. Because it is. It is a good thing. The world is so wrong about that. That every year is another year of experience, another year of wisdom, another year of gravitas with young people, another more spiritual authority, the, the ability to bless the next generation. Uh, th this is a good thing. And I just want you to know, don't be afraid. Let the rain of heaven wash over you and let it melt away all of your fear of dread and death and aging. It's just, death is just a season, like winter. It comes and it goes. If you trust in Jesus Christ, you have a future calling in his world. But you have to trust in him. You have to choose. You have to make a decision. You can reject this if you want. Don't reject it. He doesn't, he's not going to just let you die. God loves you. He'd do anything to save you. Nobody wants you to go to heaven more than he does. So friends, you are alive. You are free. You are healed. You are called. You are eternal. You have a godly destiny. And your best days are ahead. Do you believe it? Do you want it? Amen. Then, if you believe it, then say so. Today is a fantastic day to become a Christian. 
I think that Christianity at its roots requires an act of courage, a leap of faith, that to truly become a Christian, you have to start by doing something brave, like standing up in a church in front of a bunch of strangers and your family and your friends, admitting that you're not where you want to be and that you need something from God in your life. And I just want to say, God, God is calling out to you. You even feel it now. Even as I'm talking, you know what's coming. And I'm going to ask and invite in just a moment that if you are here and you, maybe you're, you're in a place where you used to believe in God, but you're just, you need to come back. You need to say you're sorry. You need to fix it. With, you need to get right with God. Or maybe you're here and you've never made that leap. You've never made a decision to become a Christian, to follow God with all your heart. You don't, have, you don't feel heaven in you and you want it. You want Jesus. Some of you say, I can't do this because I still kind of doubt. Welcome to the club. I doubt too all the time. But Jesus says, all you need is the faith of a mustard seed and you can move a mountain. That's all he needs. He doesn't say you need a faith of a mountain to move a mustard seed or even a faith of a mountain to move a mountain. You need just a tiny bit, a tiny little seed of faith. And if you respond and act in faith, God can use that. He can use that and build inside of you eternity, the kind of life he's called you to. But I am going to ask you to make a public confession of faith, and that requires courage. It requires that you be brave, and what a better day than Easter to make that decision. And so now, if you want to make that decision, I'm going to ask every head up, every eye open, everybody looking around. <laughs> because this is, this, is a, a, this is an act of courage and faith. Look, if you can't stand up for Jesus in a church, how are you going to stand up for him in the world? He said, anyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before the Father. But anyone who denies me before men, I will deny before the Father. So I'm asking you now, wherever you are, if you want to get your life right with God, if you want to receive this free gift, he believes in you, he wants you, he's not disappointed in you, stand up and come here and I want to pray for you and bless you. Right where you are. Just stand and come. He's waiting for you. He loves you just as you are. I just want you to stand and acknowledge Christ before your neighbors. How good is God? He can save you. Keep coming. You're not disturbing us. The clock is ticking. The moment is almost past. Don't let it slip. Come forward. Be obedient to what the Lord has for you. Don't, don't miss out on this gift. It's a free gift. Just say yes. So I'm going to ask that you pray with me to receive this, this gift. And as we do, church, I'm going to ask that you pray with everyone that's up here and say, Father in heaven, Father in heaven I, need I need you. I need you to save me. Save me from my fears and from my sin. Fill me with your spirit. Let eternity be in me. Mark my name in the Lamb's book of life. I trust you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. And church, would you extend your hands towards these people who have come down and so brave. I'm so proud of you. God loves you. And it's so just, this is great. Hey guys, yes. In the name of Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus that every chain would be broken, that fear would no longer dwell in these people. Bless them. Let all that they do succeed. Drive them into holiness and to your loving arms. Illuminate their prayer lives and help them, Lord, to walk every day according to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, friends. We love you. God bless you.
Good morning, dear friends of Our Power. Today is a very special Sunday because today is Easter. I wish you all a happy Easter. Lord Jesus came to Earth because He loves us. He was crucified, sacrificed His life. He shed His blood for our salvation. Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus three days after His crucifixion, representing the resurrected life of Lord Jesus. That all those who believe in Lord Jesus through baptism to die, to be buried, and raised together with Lord Jesus, that we can have a new life, a new life like Lord Jesus. Wish that all brothers and sisters in Christ to be touched by the love of Jesus, to have a resurrected life like Lord Jesus, manifest a new life. May we all live like Lord Jesus. For those who have not yet believed in Christ, may God's love be upon you. So that you can experience His love, you can also have an eternal, full, and abundant life. Once again, I wish you all a happy Easter. In the Gospel of John, chapter eleven, verse twenty-five, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Today, the Easter message of Pastor Bob Bishop is: Our best days are ahead. He declares to us a very important statement. The power that raised Lord Jesus from the dead is in us, and this power cannot be destroyed, so that we can receive the free gift of eternal life. In First Peter chapter one verse three, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because of the resurrection of Lord Jesus. Everything changed. He conquered death. Neither evil or darkness cannot put us into the ground, and heaven is breaking into our world. His resurrected power not only moves away our fear of death, this power also activates our purpose and calling in life, prepares for us a fantastic future and a new tomorrow. Because Lord Jesus is risen, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Our power, this motivational TV program, is broadcast weekly on TV Pearl Channel, every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning, and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on www. Hour of Power. dot dot hk or my TV Super. Today is Easter, to remember the salvation of Lord Jesus for mankind, so that we can have new life and new hope. Happy Easter to you all. God loves you, and see you next week on TVP Pearl.